Today we are in a very intense moment of time for the nation. Two years ago, Matt Lockett had a dream. The man that has stood for the ending of abortion for years now, 16 years. In the dream, I may have shared this with you, uh, he was with Vice President Pence's wife. She was all concerned about the Supreme Court. And in the dream, he was her bodyguard. Matt was her bodyguard. And she said, as she was disturbed, he said, remember the name Coney, Amy Coney Barrett. Remember the name Amy Coney Barrett. That was two years ago. We've been praying that for two years. It has happened. It has interrupted the whole election uh, conversation. Right now, I've read there is a rage against her. It is all about Roe v. Wade. It is about her religion, who stands for life. She's Catholic. Of course, Vice, ex Vice President Biden is Catholic. So the issue is not whether you're Catholic or what your religion is, it's where you stand concerning the shedding of the, in, of, of the blood of the unborn. God has injected this woman, I believe, as an Esther in a storyline. And she right now, and the whole thing, is being threatened to be shut down because of uh, Senate rules, Senate, Senate uh, uh, plans, things that you can do to basically delay the, um, the confirmation. It's not a political process. It is a spiritual warfare process right now. Over the last couple of days, I had a conversation with two, uh, three or four, five women who had an amazing kind of encounter where all three of them, unbeknownst to one another, had listened to my message called Heaven Come, where I spoke in 2017 at the Bethel Worship Conference. I believe we're going to send that out, uh, send that out on our website, and you could watch that. And uh, they've had these dreams about going into the gates of Mordor, which I believe is the gates of death. I believe right now, and all three of them have had this prophetic word concerning Esther. Well, just a few days ago, my friend had a dream. And in this dream, uh, in this dream, uh, a calendar rolled down before him. And in the dream, it said this, the calendar said this, if you will pay the price in October, you'll dictate the news for the next three months. I believe October is a high month for witchcraft, spiritual warfare, and it is the time for Esther to arise and challenge the spirit of genocide that is on this nation right now. So interesting, today is the 30th. As you know, I have been actually praying through 2 Kings chapter 9 and 10 for these two months, September the 9th month, October the 10th month. Today is the 30th of uh, September, and this is the passage today. Now, when Jay would come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window. Just as Jehu was entering the gate, she said, Is it peace, O murderer of your master, Zimri? I think that's the question today. Is it peace? When Jehu wrote, he says, how can there be any peace as long as the harlotries and witchcraft of Jezebel are in the land? I believe this is a month where God is not making peace with the altar of Baal, the shedding of innocent blood, and it's in, in blazing technicolor in front of the eyes of the whole nation. Tomorrow I'll share some very strong words, but today I feel the Lord is speaking to us concerning Esther. It says in Esther, in the book of Esther, chapter, if I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find that, chapter 4, 
Haman's decree of death and genocide is on the Jews. And Mordecai says to Esther, and he commands her to go into the king to make supplication to him and plead before the king for her people, the Jewish people. So uh, this man returned and told Esther the words. Then Esther spoke to this, the uh, thoughts and gave him a, uh, and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he is but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. When I, when this dream of the calendar came, suddenly God stirred me. I believe God is saying, over the whole month of October, 30 days to the 30th, it is time for Esther to prepare herself to go before the king. And in the last three days, the 31st, 1st and 2nd of November, prior to the elections, we want to call an Esther fast, however God leads, that God will shift things and break the decree of the king, Roe v. Wade, in the elections. I believe that this election is not a referendum on President Trump's character or on President Biden's character. I believe it is a referendum on where God's people will stand on the issue of legalized murder in America. People might say, Lou, that's pretty hard language. You gotta ask the question, what does the Bible say? <laughs> it, it grieves me so intensely. Would you vote for someone, if we lined a million 16 years old, 16 year olds up on a line, and the President of the United States gave a decree to murder this million teenagers in cold blood before the whole nation, would you vote for that person? Obviously, you would not if that was his decree. But if you believe the Bible, how are you going to argue that there's a difference between the newly conceived child in the womb and nine months of birth, and when he comes out suddenly, he's a different kind of human being? I believe the Word of God is giving final exam to the church right now. I'm calling the Esther's to arise. It was several years ago when President Trump was elected, where witches worldwide gathered together on one day to curse President Trump. You've got to ask the question, why Jezebel's witchcraft is engaged with this man? It's not because of his character. It's because of what he stands to the destruction of this altar of Baal. Because of this plan to curse President Trump, I went to Estes Park to fast and pray to seek God concerning these witches. My wife looked it up and she found out that some people call Estes Park in Colorado, Esther's Park. On the third day, I have an epic dream. And that dream was this. I was in a gathering of all women. It was just me and my friend, two men in the midst of it. He gives me an old Bible, which I believe it is the Word of God. It is an ancient Word of God. And in this dream, as far as I could see, women, teenagers were coming from everywhere. It was a buzz. There was a sense that it, we're in a revival. And they were all coming to hear the book of Esther be taught. In this dream, a woman stands up and she's teaching the book of Esther. And she says, and these two words in the book of Esther actually mean Nazgul. I wake up out of the dream and instantly I know what it means. Because you see, I watched the Lord of the Rings and the third part is the return of the king. And in that dream, in that movie, there is a witch king 
who is the Nazgul, the demonic prince of death, the witch king. And in the dream, he is riding this demonic dragon. But in the dream, he is destroying the armies of men. And in the dream, he says, no man can kill me, but the daughter of the king, who is disguised in men's war armor, takes off her helmet, lets her hair down, and says, I am no man. And she pierces the Nazgul. I wake up and I understand that there are certain spirits that can only be challenged and won, not alone, Esther needs her Mordecai, but there are certain spirits that women have been called to challenge before the king, our king, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is warring on behalf of the unborn. I believe Esther is now. It was in much less now than it is in full bloom right now a worldwide witchcraft and rage against this pro-life president to stop the altars of Baal, uh, who, wants to, who actually wants to end Roe v. Wade. Because of this, these women had these dreams, th these words, these dreams about entering the gates of Mordor. It's the Nazgul. I am calling. I believe the ancient word in that dream was the Bible, the ancient assignment as a Mordecai. I am calling millions of Esthers. I don't know how to do it. I'm putting this word out. I'm encouraging you, if you're watching this, send it all out to all your uh, women friends for 30 days. Prepare yourself. Plead the blood of Jesus for 30 days over the blood that is calling for judgment on this nation. Plead the blood of Jesus. And on the 31st of October, mobilize and go before the king in a three-day Esther fast and declare that God challenges and reverses Roe v. Wade, that the Supreme Court of Heaven, as it was in the days of Esther, will overrule the Supreme Court of Haman. These are the days that you've got to ask yourself a question. If you pay the price in the month of October, I will dictate the news in the next three months. That's through January. Thank you for weighing this heavily before God.